Happening now, a Celeron man is facing charges after police say he got in the way of first responders fighting a fire at his house yesterday. Plus, Governor Cuomo's latest response in his growing sexual harassment scandal. Well, the temperatures are up from where they were yesterday. We've got some sunshine out there for today, but we've got some storms on the way tomorrow. They could be strong. We'll talk about it next as the news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. A 53-year-old homeowner is facing charges after allegedly obstructing firefighters who were fighting a blaze in Celeron last night. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Town of Ellicott police say fire crews responded to a blaze on East Duquesne Street in the village of Celeron around 745 last night. And it's alleged Todd Rosenthal entered the residence and began arguing with fire personnel. Furthermore, police say Rosenthal ripped a face mask off a volunteer firefighter, damaging the equipment. He's charged with obstructing firefighting operations and fourth-degree criminal mischief. Officers say he's scheduled to appear in the town of Ellicott Court at a later date. Now, the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Fire Investigation Team reports an unmaintained wood stove surrounded by combustible materials likely started that blaze. The property has since been condemned due to the damage sustained. Well, in his first face-to-face -face encounter with journalists in months, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo yesterday flatly denied he'd done anything inappropriate with any of the women who have accused him of sexual misconduct and harassment. Several current and former state employees and other women have accused Cuomo of making unwanted sexual remarks and advances, giving them unwanted kisses or touching them inappropriately. One female aide accused Cuomo of groping her breasts after summoning her to the, his official residence. Now, speaking to reporters at the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse, the Democrat abandoned his past approach of expressing, uh, condemning uh, the acts for some past behaviors while declining to address whether specific allegations were true. Take a listen. Put it very simply, no. All of the no. The sexual harassment, That's right. Denying all of That's that. right. Yes. If, if Tish James's report comes back and finds the contrary, considering that you've said zero tolerance for sexual harassment in this state, will you discipline yourself or consider resigning? Yeah, the report can't say anything different because I didn't do anything wrong. Now, this was the first time Cuomo has allowed a group of journalists to question him in person since sexual harassment allegations surfaced in December. He has deferred calls for his resignation from many of New York's most influential Democrats, including most members of the state's congressional delegation and a majority of state lawmakers. Well, the race of the U.S. 19 COVID-19 vaccination effort is starting to slow down. While most Americans who wanted to get their shot have now gotten it, there's another big hurdle for public health experts. It's called vaccine hesitancy. Isabel Rosales breaks down the plan to get more shots in arms and the new mask guidance that's expected to come out this week. One in four Americans is now fully vaccinated, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Health experts believe we'll see the pace of vaccinations slow down. I think that it's going to be slower, but I think we're going to continue to get there. Vaccine hesitancy is proving to be an obstacle. The CDC says a growing number of Americans, about 8%, is missing their scheduled second dose. I think some people um, are getting a little bit frightened by some of the talk and, quite frankly, some of the misinformation. A new poll taken while the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine was on hold, but released Monday, found 73% of unvaccinated respondents did not want to take J&J shot. The vaccine is now back in use. In India, a COVID crisis. The one thing I can tell you, it's very, very serious what's going on. The country reported Sunday the highest single day number of cases recorded anywhere in the world for the fifth straight day. Even though we're doing very well in this country, there's always the threat of a variant that originated someplace else coming back to our country. The U.S. will now send India much needed oxygen supplies, testing kits, and PPE. Back in the U.S., new CDC guidance is expected this week on wearing masks outdoors for fully vaccinated Americans. The uh, data indicate that the risk 
particularly outside, if you're masked, is very, very low. So let's see what the guidelines say. They have been uh, long anticipated, actually. In Washington, I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. Isabel, thank you. So far, over 50,000 people in Chautauqua and 25,000 in Cattaraugus counties have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. A local veteran was welcomed home by his family, fellow vets, and community members alike during a surprise homecoming yesterday. Cindy Reedy, she's the program coordinator for the Joseph P. Dwyer Peer-to-Peer -peer Program of Chautauqua County, says Calvin Fain is hospitalized after having a bad reaction to medication prescribed following a heart transplant. Now, he was transferred from hospital to hospital over the past month while doctors worked to diagnose what was wrong. Well, after study by countless medical professionals and several prayers from community members, the vet recovered quickly and was released from the hospital. That's when members of the Dwyer Group and other supporters got together to arrange the surprise homecoming visit. Some of the pictures on Facebook you can see are some of my guys. Um, Chuck is a, a really great artist and he was drawing some really fancy things and, and we had everybody kind of chip in and do their part and make a sign. and. Now, Reedy says community members who would like to send Get Well Soon cards should address them to 76 Ivory Street in Frewsburg. The zip code's 14738 if you don't have it. She says Payne will spend some time recovering at home until he's back to full strength. Certainly the community out in full strength there yesterday. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. We uh, absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, good to see Lindsay. Good to see Rita, uh, Laura, Rick, and uh, Teresa as well. Hopefully you all are having a great day. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, well, now let's get to Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, who's standing by with a first look at our weather. I love stories like this, Dakota. We were talking mm -hmm. about it this morning. Really, it's my favorite type of news to, to talk about, honestly. Uh, incredible. And you know what? From that Dwyer group and the other vets, I wouldn't expect anything less coming out to welcome home uh, their friend and neighbor. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I actually did preview some of the uh, story uh, as in to... Uh, the uh, pieces that uh, we just had in the package. And uh, it was kind of a very uh, um, heartwarming, I guess would be the proper word that, uh, that I'm trying to think of. Yeah, the whole weather office has been busy today and we'll tell you why. But uh, here's what's going on right now. 72 degrees right now in Warren, lots of sunshine out there. And the majority of the day is gonna be nice and dry. So no weather hassles to contend with out there today. That is the good news. But that all changes tomorrow with a uh, storm system that's moving to our north and west. We're gonna get into some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Some of them could be strong to severe. We'll talk about that a little bit later on and the, the actual timing and whatnot. Still that tree pollen is still giving us all those problems out there. If you're like me, you've got uh, serious allergies and that's been the culprit uh, throughout the past uh, week or so. 51 was the high yesterday. We started the day at 43, a pair of eights record high 1990 and 2006, 25 broke their record high and low. So uh, through the afternoon today, 69 to 76, well above average for this time of the year, much warmer than it was the past several days. A sun and cloud mix through the day, but Tomorrow, we get into some showers and thunderstorms again. Some of them could be strong to severe. We'll time it out and where with that 42 degrees and sunny seven day forecast later in the show. So stay tuned. All right, Dakota, it looks like spring is here, especially when we talk about thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, Jamestown's representative in New York State Senate says the population shift that caused the state to lose one congressional seat is just another side effect of bad governing. Senator George Borrello released a statement yesterday following the U.S. Census report, which announced the population shift he attributes to New York's Democratic leaders. He says New Yorkers are moving to areas like Florida, Texas, and North Carolina. Borrello explains the state's government and New York City-controlled legislature is to blame for that migration. The state's population grew by more than 4 percent over the past decade, that according to the census. But that increase didn't keep pace with big jumps in other parts of the country. New York is one of seven states losing a member of Congress as a result of the 2020 census. Five states will gain a seat in Congress. Texas will gain two. Well, while the loss of at least one seat was expected here in New York, the political world has been in some suspense over whether it might lose two in next year's congressional elections. 
It's not yet clear how voter districts will change. Britt Conway breaks down the top takeaways from the 2020 census count, which was released yesterday. It started in the small Alaskan village of Tuxuk Bay last January, and now, more than a year later, the results from the 2020 census are in. The total U.S. population topped 331 million people. It's the second slowest decade of growth in history. But the South and West saw the biggest population growth. And where the population goes, so does the power. The census determines how many seats in Congress each state will have over the next decade, starting with the 2022 midterm elections. Texas will gain two seats. Colorado, Florida, Montana, North Carolina, and Oregon will each gain one seat. But California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia each lose a seat. The number of seats also affects the number of electoral votes each state gets. The shifts from this census could be marginally more helpful to a Republican presidential candidate come 2024. But the census doesn't just determine population and politics. The data is used for everything from deciding how many teachers to put in schools and how much money needs to be set aside for public housing programs to helping figure out where to put health clinics or where to build new roads. And more detailed data will be coming out in the next few months that states will use to help draw the boundaries of their congressional districts. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you. Now, traditionally, state lawmakers and governors have redrawn voting districts for seats in the U.S. House and state legislatures. But some states, which include New York, have shifted that job to special commissions or made other changes intended to reduce the potential for partisan gerrymandering. Next here, a lot more to tell you about the latest agreement approved by City of Jamestown lawmakers. And later, the future of local fairs, who organizers here in Chautauqua County are looking to for guidance about this summer's festivities. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. The George Barone Jr. Scholarship Fund is hosting its first annual rummage and bag sale fundraiser. An inductee in the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame, Barone managed, coached, and assisted in youth baseball for 64 years in and around the Jamestown area. 100% of proceeds generated will be donated, which will provide scholarships to graduating Southwestern Central School seniors who partake in athletics. Learn more by checking out the scholarship on Facebook and joining us for the fundraising event. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Honest John says what you're looking for When you want it good, we're gonna give you lots more from freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has what you're looking for. And now two great locations, East 2nd Street and Fairmount Avenue. Order takeout or delivery today online at honestjohns.pizza. You're gonna get it good at Honest John's. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Welcome back to WNY News Now. The Jamestown City Council has unanimously approved a tentative agreement with the city's firefighting union. Members of the council voted on that agreement with Professional Firefighters Association Local 137 last night. Now, according to Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist, the wage scale for 2018 through 2020 will be increased by 2% each year. Sunquist says that the agreement came after a long period of negotiating between the two sides there. We still need to resolve 2021, but this finally puts us in line 
with all the remainder of the other unions as we start to negotiate 2021 and going into the future. Now, in addition to the extended pay scale, the mayor explains the city will be working to solidify an EMS supervisor position. Sunquist, however, explains that both sides still need to reach an agreement for this year and beyond. Councilwoman Kim Eklund recused herself from the vote because her husband is a retired member of the union. A bill that will require all new passenger vehicles sold in New York to solely run on electric energy has passed through the state Senate. The legislation directs the Commission of Department of Environmental Conservation to establish uh, regulations starting that 100 percent of new passenger vehicles sold are electric by 2035 and that the medium and heavy duty vehicles sold in the state are electric by 2045. Now by doing so, bill organizers say a smooth and orderly process will fully electrify all vehicles in New York. Now, with more than 11 million vehicles registered in the state, the proposed law's sponsors explain the transportation sector is the single largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions here in New York, which much of that air pollution disproportionately affects low-income communities and communities of color. The bill now heads to Governor Cuomo's desk for his signature before it becomes law. If you're in the market for a car this year, get ready to pay more. That's because car dealerships are facing shortages and consumers are paying the price. In today's Consumer Watch, Mandy Gaither has a closer look at what's behind these sticker prices. A price boom for cars. Car lots across the country are dealing with limited inventories and that's forcing many consumers to pay more for those high demand cars. Car dealerships are reporting they only have a fraction of the vehicles they typically have, both new and used, and that limited supply is sending prices to record levels. In the first quarter of the year, the average new car price was $37,200. And according to industry analysts at J.D. Power, that's up 8.4% from the same period a year ago. J.D. Power says wholesale prices for used cars sold at auction are up 26% percent since the start of this year. It's a dramatic shift from a year ago when many car dealerships were forced to close due to the pandemic and the shift to working from home caused a 30 percent drop in car sales. Now sales are booming. Last month, the seasonally adjusted sales rate for new cars hit the highest level since October 2017. But that demand is coming at a difficult time. A computer chip shortage is shutting down production at auto plants around the world. According to Cox Automotive, new car production in North America is down about 3.4 million vehicles in the first three months of 2021. Limited supply and strong sales, all causing those historic prices. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. The computer chip shortage is only one factor squeezing the inventory of available vehicles. Experts say other auto parts, including tires, are starting to be in short supply as well. Well, encourage someone to share a story or tell yourself one because today is National Tell a Story Day. Storytelling is an ancient practice of handing down knowledge or even entertaining from one generation to the next, and it can take many forms. Maybe you remember a good fable from your childhood. If not, you can read one from a book or, heck, make one up. No matter what story you tell, gather some friends and family to celebrate National Tell a Story Day. It's a wonderful way to pass along some family traditions, histories, and long-told tales. You always got to be careful, though, Dakota, because sometimes those tales become pretty tall tales out mm -hmm. there. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. Uh, let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. We uh, love to hear from you. It's good to see uh, Pam. Good to see Craig, Peggy, Christian, and Linda as well. Hopefully you're all having a good day. I love storytelling, uh, although I'm more of the nonfiction type of storytelling, mm -hmm. as you can probably tell here at WNY News Now. Uh, I always love ch chatting with people. Um, and I think it's an art form that is lost nowadays. Everybody's so glued to their phones. Right. It's it's difficult to sometimes talk to people. Mm -hmm. And obviously with COVID and things like that, uh, that kind of moved us physically away. But I think it's always good to have uh, you know that that talk. And a lot of people are like, well, that small talk is real cheap. But 
it's not always small talk. Like when I'm asking someone how their day is, it's you know, I actually really care. Like, why would you say something if it didn't matter? Mm -hmm. I've always thought about thought it right. that way. Well, I mean, you know, in terms of you know stories, you know, if you want one, I can I can share one very quickly. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so you I have don't thirty know if seconds. I, okay, so I don't know if I ever <laughs> shared the time I got kicked out of summer camp. Did I? Oh ever? no! What what happened? So I went to summer camp at the Lakewood Y. Yep. This was probably around 2001, 2002, somewhere in that time frame, around the turn of the century. And uh, a kid was being an idiot, so I bit him on the arm. Really? I was a biter. You were a biter? Back then. I was, I was just talking about this with my mom the other day. I got bit at Allen Park when I was like four. Traumatized me forever. It was inside. They still have it, that blue well, it like, wasn't tube. Me. I can, no, I, it was I a can girl. That. She bit me, and I didn't like it. <laughs> so she just loved you. I guess so. Before where is I was she interested now? in girls, hmm. that would be a question. Where yes. is she? Hmm. Should talk with County Jail, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She might actually be watching this program. Maybe. As a Do you remember biting me? Please write me on uh, Twitter. DM me. I, yes. I'd be interested. Justin Gold WNY is his handle on uh, the Twitter. But anyway, the chance of Getting into my actual job, the chance of rain over the next five days. Yeah, we're going to at least see some rain showers tomorrow and Thursday. And again, the better chance for the most widespread rain is going to be on Thursday. But tomorrow we get a chance for showers and, hey, maybe our first strong thunderstorms of the year. Not, to, you know, depending on which way you kind of look at it. But then the weekend will also turn drier as well. Today, fantastic day to get out. If you've got a tea time set for this afternoon, look at these temperatures. 74 at 2 o'clock, 75 at 4, 74 at 6 o'clock with a sun and cloud mix. It's going to be a great day out there. I mean, temperatures are going to be running almost about 15 or so degrees above average to where they should be for this time of the year. So get out and enjoy the sunshine for today. We're at 69 already as of noon hour with a healthy southwest wind to 16 and uh, the wind gust is at 24. So also keep that in mind if you're heading out to the golf course as well. Keep that healthy southwest wind in mind because the southwest wind, the wind often curves the ball. So keep that in mind. All right, so the satellite and radar composite, high pressure moving off the uh, northeast coast. One storm system right here, this is going to impact us tomorrow. Then another storm system right down here over Texas, this is going to move our way on Thursday. So you'll see the influx of the moisture coming in over the next couple of days. So there is our, our first low-end risk for severe weather tomorrow. The uh, Storm Prediction Center has placed all of western New York and uh, northwestern Pennsylvania under a marginal risk. That's a level one out of five. That's the lowest severe weather uh, index on the scale. But even though it's a low end threat, it still is a threat nonetheless. So here's the uh, timing on this. We think the uh, start time of some of the strongest storms will be right around this time tomorrow afternoon. And then they should clear out of the area by about three o'clock in the afternoon. The main threat here is mainly gonna be gusty winds, maybe upwards of 60 miles an hour, but we could see some limited large hail as well. No, uh, there is no tornado threat with this. The atmospheric conditions don't favor that. And uh, there could be some minor flooding depending on where the heaviest downpours are. So keep that in mind. So here we go with future scan. We'll time it out for you. Nothing through the day, but notice the cloud cover is starting to come in uh, through the afternoon. So tonight will be mostly cloudy. And then as we start the day tomorrow, it should be mainly dry to start. And then watch as we go towards late morning into the mid afternoon. Notice the showers and thunderstorms starting to blossom here. And again, this is a high resolution computer model that we're using. So it's giving us the best look at this. So again, notice the storm starting to sweep uh, from west to east throughout the day. And again, when you see the darker colors, that does indicate the chance for thunderstorm development. And the better chance, at least it's looking like initially from the state line to the south, you might see the better chance for at least some stronger thunderstorms. So here's storm potential. This is a product that we have on FutureScan that, that tries to indicate where the best chances for at least thunderstorm development will be. And we're looking for like the greens and the yellows, and you can see it down across uh, northwestern Pennsylvania. So that looks like the main threat is mainly going to be northwestern Pennsylvania, but we won't rule out the chance for at least a couple strong storms across uh, the southern tier tomorrow and make sure you have a way of getting warnings the weather radios your smartphones make sure you have them on and of course we'll have the weather office staffed for tomorrow as well how about the future it should be coming up in just a second here brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny 75 will do it for tomorrow maybe a few of those thunderstorms mid-afternoon strong 64 on thursday rain showers a cooler finish to the month on friday 53 and then we're into may on saturday 
the weekend nice and then maybe a chance for a small shower as we go into Monday. We'll take a break. Be right back. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. Welcome back to WNY News Now. Finally here today, organizers with the Chautauqua County Fail are keeping their eye on how state leaders plan to host New York State's fair this summer. Chautauqua County Fair President Dave Wilson tells WNY News Now as of today, he believes the fair will not take place. However, don't rule it out because the state could adjust their guidance on the matter. WNY News Now's Andrew Kane with more on the state's current plans to host a statewide fair. After a year off due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Governor Andrew Cuomo joined State Fair organizers in Syracuse to preview what festivities at the New York State Fair could look like this summer. The fair, Cuomo says, will go on for the full 18 days from August 20th to September 6th in a limited capacity. We want to keep the crowd size at, at about 50%, so we'll have four separate areas food and beverage, amusement rides, concerts, uh, and the agricultural exhibit. And that will give us the ability to control the number of people uh, who are coming and going. These general operating principles will remain in place and will be revised between now and August, depending on the positivity and vaccination rates. The fair saw a record attendance of more than 1.3 million people in 2019 before having zero people show up last year. Still, Assemblyman Bill Magnarelli took on an optimistic tone. It was painful. But that's what we had to do to keep everyone safe during the pandemic. In that time, the New York State Fair never stopped its pro programming. There was drive-through fair food. There were fair at home contests. And of course, the famous annual butter sculpture. Still nothing beats being able to visit the fairgrounds in person. With the vaccine, we can finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. In the meantime, the fair will be open, a point Cuomo made very clear. Mark it on your calendar, uh, start to plan to buy tickets, uh, and vendors uh, start to get ready. And then as we get closer to the date, as I mentioned, we'll have more specifics. Admission to the fair is $3 per person, with children under 12 admitted free of charge. Andrew Kane, WNY News Now. Andrew, thank you. Back in Chautauqua County, fair staff plan to meet next week to discuss the future of the summertime festivities. We'll certainly keep you updated. It's exciting to hear that uh, the fair might be coming back. I know that we're, it seems like throughout this whole thing we've been waiting on the state for more. And that's what fair officials here locally say. But, I mean, if we can have a statewide fair, why can't we have county fairs too? Right. And, I mean, I don't want to speak for the health department or right. for the government, but I right. think the way that they're going to handle the county fairs is by vaccination levels and I think maybe by cases. Right. Uh, yeah, because every area is, is different. I gotta right? think is how they're going to handle this. Right. And I think um, we've seen that throughout where if we had high infection rates in mm -hmm. certain areas and the governor has said this in his press Then briefings, there won't be one. Then, right, areas that have higher infections rates are going to see less uh, opening. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see where we go, but his pledge to have a state fair, it's I think a lot of good news, especially for a lot of these young kids who, you know, they work hard yes. on programs like 4-H but also and they want to the show off time, their work. If you want to go to a fair, is it really worth going all the way to Syracuse? Right, I don't know. Uh, yeah. And like, then plus that, you see, I that's don't know. The thing. No, I agree. Because what, Syracuse because is it four, just seems like four the and a half fair. hours away? 
Right, and you know, it seems like the state fair would offer more travelers, because I think right. Cuomo mentioned yesterday that there are people who come in from what, like 15 other states? Right. Yeah. So it's like, to me, the state fair would have more outside travelers right. than county fairs. More of a I local economic impact. I guess we'll just see. See you tomorrow. Yeah, we will see what happens. You don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Stay weather know. aware tomorrow as well. Yes, Dakota will be back tomorrow right here at noon, in the, in the middle of it maybe. Yes. Uh, as well. So we'll just news. have a half an hour of weather. Yeah! <laughs> so I don't have to come in at all? Just sure. all weather? <laughs> Alright. See you tomorrow, everybody.